Once upon a time, in a kingdom far away, there lived a werewolf king named Harry Leonard. He was the ruler of the Leonard clan, a powerful pack of werewolves known for their strength, loyalty, and fierce nature. King Harry had three sons, Arnold, William, and Nikolai, who were all strong and handsome like their father. But despite their good looks and strength, the princes were cursed by an evil witch. The curse stated that they would never find true love and would never be able to have children. And while Arnold and William were cursed to live a life of loneliness, Nikolai was cursed to be heartless and brutal, never to experience love or happiness. The curse was placed on the princes because the evil witch had lost her own newborn baby during an encounter with King Harry. Enraged and seeking revenge, she placed the curse on his sons, causing immense pain to the king. All he wanted was a grandchild to continue the Leonard lineage, but the curse made it impossible. Desperate to break the curse, King Harry searched far and wide for a solution. But years passed, and the curse seemed unbreakable. In the meantime, the Leonard clan was facing a crisis. They needed an heir to secure their future, but with the princes cursed, it seemed impossible. In a desperate attempt to continue their bloodline, the king ordered all female prisoners of war to be brought to his sons as slaves. It was a cruel and barbaric practice, but the king saw no other way to ensure the survival of his clan. Meanwhile, efforts were still being made to break the curse, but none of the slaves or mates of the princes were able to get pregnant. A werewolf named Marie Anderson was the only survivor after her pack was attacked. Despite her attempts to escape, she was captured by the rival pack and brought to the werewolf king as a prisoner. Marie was different from the other female prisoners. She had a fierce spirit and a strong will, and she refused to back down even in the face of danger. Before getting presented to the princes, all female prisoners are taken to the servant quarters and bathed so they will look presentable and hopefully get accepted by the princes. Any female prisoner who is not chosen will be taken to the dungeon. Marie had no interest in warming any prince's bed and so made no effort at looking presentable. While the preparations are ongoing, one of the servants who heard Marie's story felt bad for her and said, Pray that the youngest prince never looks at you. Why? Marie asked spitefully. You look stubborn, and he is attracted to stubborn people and enjoys breaking them. He has never slept with a female servant. They all died from his torture. Show that you are weak in there, and you might luckily get chosen by any of the elder princes since you are very beautiful. When Marie was brought to the chamber along with two other female prisoners, the three princes were already seated on their royal chairs, but only two paid attention to them. Their gaze was calculating as they looked at the slaves from head to toe, all except one. The third prince, who was seated in the leftmost chair, paid no attention to the beautiful women standing in front of him. He did not even open his eyes. And somehow, as if he knew she was staring at him, his eyes flew open before she could look away. A pair of eyes, unlike any she had seen before, held her gaze. Marie felt she had nothing more to lose after losing her entire family, and so she stared back at him defiantly. Unlike the other two slaves, Marie did not hang her head low, but held it high, refusing to be intimidated by the princes who were looking at them to make their choices. Marie made sure she was the least appealing of the three female slaves by constantly rubbing, scratching her hands and face as if she had a skin disease, and scrunching her face to look as ugly as she could. And this made the two princes, in order of age, choose the more beautiful and apparently healthy-looking slaves. Nikolai, on the other hand, who never showed any interest in any female slave, saw right through Marie's facade from his seat, an amused expression on his face. When one of his brothers mocked her for being ugly, sick, and probably dying, she gave a feisty answer despite knowing that she could be killed for speaking back to a royal prince. Intrigued by her fierce eyes and strong will, Nikolai made a decision that surprised everyone. For the first time, he chose a female slave, Marie. Marie's body gave an involuntary shudder when she remembered what she heard from the maid in the servant quarters about Nikolai. He stood in front of her, looking like a hunter who had found his prey. How does he torture his slaves? What have I gotten into? Marie wondered. However, Nikolai had no intention of sharing a bed with her. Instead, he saw her as an object of amusement, someone he could push and test 
to see how strong-willed she truly was. Having lived a boring and lonely life, Nikolai found himself drawn to Marie's fiery spirit and wanted to see what she could withstand and how long it would take to break her. For the next three weeks, Marie was taught how to serve the prince and how to stay away from invoking his wrath. Amidst all that, Prince Nikolai made sure she was assigned difficult tasks in the palace, given stronger opponents who would defeat her during training. Yet Marie stayed headstrong, never breaking, so the icy prince will not get what he wants from her. Her next encounter with Prince Nikolai was during a wall-climbing training session, when he ordered her to be given a difficult one just to see her fail. Marie has always been afraid of height, right from childhood. She attempted to climb the tall wall, but fell midway. Marie was so angry that she charged at the prince to fight him and die with her head held high. She was fed up with his tortures and will not wait for the day Nikolai gets to see her broken. She would rather die than give him that satisfaction. Marie was no fighting match for Prince Nikolai, so he averted all her attacks at him, never once attacking her back until she got frustrated and left the arena, heading towards the forest. She transformed into her wolf form and ran for miles. Later, she transformed back into her human form and sat under a tree, finally allowing all her emotions out, the anger, sadness, longing for her family, and fear of how her life in the palace would continue to be. Prince Nikolai had followed her without her awareness, and he stood a distance from her, watching her cry. For the first time in his life, he felt touched by what he witnessed and felt bad for torturing an innocent woman just to entertain his bored life. Moments passed, and Marie walked back to the castle, feeling relieved, with a new plan to escape the kingdom and the icy prince. Prince Nikolai decided to ask Marie to accompany him to the royal banquet. The chief maid was ordered to dress her elegantly, and she transformed Marie into a beauty that made even the prince himself stare at her in awe. All attention was caught by the stunningly beautiful and curvy Marie as she entered the banquet hall with Prince Nikolai. The elder brothers, Arnold and William, were immediately jealous of Nikolai for having such a beautiful woman by his side. Nikolai and Marie's relationship changed since then. She was no longer tortured, but was not allowed to leave the castle. Marie was wary of the prince, and Nikolai couldn't stand her fiery temper, especially when she was caught by the guards roaming in the forest due to boredom. But amidst that starts an intense attraction between them, one they both deny acknowledging. One evening, Nikolai saved Marie, who was almost raped by one of the palace chiefs, who had been obsessed with her beauty since the night of the banquet. How dare you look at my woman? I will cut off these filthy hands of yours that touched what belongs to me. Anyone who dares to touch a strand of her hair will get the same punishment. Prince Nikolai barks furiously as he orders the chief to be taken away. As the days went by, Nikolai and Marie's relationship began to change. They went from being master and slave to something more. She started seeing beyond his icy self and found the kind and loving man hidden beneath the heartless facade. One day, while Marie was attempting to escape the palace, she overheard a conversation between two guards about a plan to kill Prince Nikolai. She was shocked, and she immediately ran to warn him. Together, they foiled the plan, and in the process, they gained each other's trust and respect. As they spent more time together, they started to learn about each other, and their initial distrust and fights turned into a deep friendship. But little did they know that they were also falling in love. Their bond grew stronger, and one night, Nikolai made Marie his mate through a blood bond ritual. They consummated their bond, and it was a night they would never forget. But their happiness was short-lived. King Harry fell sick, and anxiety started to spread among the palace as to who would be chosen as his successor. It was during this time of uncertainty that the enemies of the Leonard family saw an opportunity to strike. They succeeded in poisoning Arnold's mind, making him believe that his father would choose Nikolai as his successor. They claimed that Nikolai, being the only one who had found true love, would be able to break the curse that had been placed on their family and produce an heir, something that Arnold was unable to do. Filled with jealousy and a desire for power, Arnold allowed the enemies to infiltrate the palace, and a war ensued. But amidst all the chaos and destruction, 
a ray of hope emerged in the form of Nikolai and his mate, Marie. They showed an immense sense of responsibility, political tactic, and wisdom in handling the situation. They knew that the real enemy was not within the palace walls, but outside, trying to destroy their family. The once peaceful and united palace was now divided, and it seemed like there was no way to mend the broken relationship between the factions created within the council. With Marie's support, Nikolai used his diplomatic skills to bring peace and understanding between his brothers and the council members. He convinced Arnold that he had no intention of taking the throne and that he had never wanted to be king. Slowly but surely, the brothers started to trust each other again. Arnold apologized to Nikolai for his actions and congratulated him for finding a strong and supportive mate like Marie. He realized that true love was not a weakness, but a strength that could bring a family together. Meanwhile, King Harry regained his health, and peace was restored to the palace. King Harry was overjoyed to learn that his sons had grown into wise and capable leaders, just like he had always wanted. He was proud of his sons for putting aside their differences and working together to protect their kingdom. He announced that Arnold would be his successor, and Nikolai would be his advisor. But Arnold, to everyone's surprise, gave up the throne for Nikolai, who, despite being the youngest, was said to suffer the most from the curse, and despite that, has grown to be the most capable of the three brothers in protecting the kingdom from invading enemies with the support of Marie, who has all the characteristics required for a queen. The evil witch's curse was finally lifted, and the Leonard family was stronger than ever before. The kingdom was at peace, and the people were grateful for their wise and just rulers. And as for the three brothers, they had learned the most important lesson of all, that true love and family were the greatest treasures one could ever have. King Harry finally got his wish. Marie gave birth to a healthy baby boy, a true heir to the throne. And as they looked into their son's eyes, Nikolai and Marie knew that their love had not only broken a curse, but had also brought hope and happiness to their pack. Their love story became a legend that would be told for generations to come. I hope you enjoyed Defying the Werewolf Prince. For more epic stories, please subscribe and turn on post notification. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.